This is Jerry Long with EMA Design Automation, a Cadence Channel Partner. I'm going to give a brief demonstration of the new integration with System SI Parallel Bus Analysis from Cadence and Timing Designer, a timing diagram based static timing analysis tool from EMA. Most of the focus here will be on a previously set up DDR3 demo using a single controller device and two 8-bit DDR3 memory devices connected for a 16-bit data bus. This is an overly simplified DDR3 example that allows emphasis on interaction between System SI and Timing Designer. As we can see here, we've already got our project open and we've set up our controller and two memory devices to be connected to a PCB block. In System SI, you set up your circuit representation using module blocks. Each of these blocks is assigned a particular IBIS model or S parameter model for simulation. In this case, I've also connected a voltage reference model which is labeled here as VRM to represent our power supply supplying power to the board. This gives us an idea of non-ideal power simulations versus ideal power simulations. With System SI, there's a workflow over here on the left side which allows us to easily set up our devices. Here we've already loaded our workspace and assigned our IVIS models and edited those models, but we'll go ahead and open one up and show you how that's done. Simply clicking on each of the module blocks allows access to configure the block. In this case, for the controller, if we want to load an IBIS model, we select the Load IBIS Model button, navigate to our IBIS file, select it, and if that particular model has various components listed within it, we pick the associated component model we want to use, in this case a controller. Once we have that set up, our configurability and our connectivity is done, the next thing we want to do is set our timing budget. We can take a look at that. Here this is where we want to define what our requirements are, for instance our transmit setup and hold, our receive setup and hold, this is where we fill that particular information out. Here we've selected the bus type for address command, we switch to data, uh, our data setup. So now our specifics are set up for our configuration for the device, our connectivity is done, all we need to do now is set our analysis options. So when we run the simulation we get the type of simulation we're looking for. So here if I select analysis options, we get the analysis options panel. We can switch back and forth between address and command. Uh, right now it's set to address. Now that we've set that up, uh, we're ready to begin our simulation. So we apply, select OK. To run it, we just select run bus simulation. And then we can continue to run. Okay, once our simulation has completed, we get our curves displayed in the curve window here. We can just double click on the header to bring that up to a, a larger display here. On the left side of this display, you'll get the signal list of what's included in the graphs. So here what I've done is I've ran data write and read operation. So here's the data write, the data read, uh, and then I ran it again to include the address bus. So these are our basic simulations. If I just click this through and turn off some of these and just take a look at some of these signals of interest. Uh, let's just take a look at a data read for instance. We can expand that to see how that particular read operation uh, panned out through the simulation. We can just look at one of the buses here. We'll just turn all the upper bus off. We can see here how each one of the particular signals has come through. We're at a nice rail-to-rail -rail operation. Uh, if we like, we can turn our threshold markers on to see where our thresholds would be measured for our setup and hold times. Now that our simulations are complete, we can take a look at our measurement results. With System SI, you can generate an HTML-based report file that will accumulate all the necessary simulation information into one easy-to-read report format including simulation settings and tabularized worst-case min-max timings. However, with the new Timing Designer interface, you can translate the results into the Timing Designer environment for easy location of all critical measurements in an engineering-friendly timing diagram. In order to do this, we must first enable the interface. From the Tools menu, select Options, Edit Options, and then select Generate Report from the Measurement Report section then select the checkbox for interface to timing designer. This will allow access to enable the timing designer interface.
to translate the information into Timing Designer, simply right select on the simulation of interest, then select Generate Report. From here, you can select the Timing Designer tab at the bottom, enter the path to the Timing Designer executable file, and select Launch. Timing Designer will begin to run, prompt you for some settings. Generally, just leave the default settings, select OK. It will then generate a project file. Here we can just name this. I'm going to call it My Project. Select OK. Then it will generate the timing diagrams of interest. Here we selected on the right timing diagrams uh, for both Memory 1 and Memory 2. We want both of them to be displayed. And then we select OK. Timing Designer responds by opening up the diagram windows of interest. You can see the Memory 1 and Memory 2 diagram windows here for the write operation. If we zoom full, we can see that the diagram was created with the correct data pattern, the same thing that we had in System SI. And we can also see the locations of the critical measurements for worst case min and max timing values. Here we want to make our precision for settings uh, boosted up to about five places so that we can see the decimal points go out to about five places here. So if we want to compare our measurements that are reported in Timing Designer to our actual measurement report file in System SI, we can simply take a look at that report file. We've already generated that as report four, so we can jump over to that report, scroll down to where the tabularized measurement data is and take a look at a TDSH value. So TDSH, this is the memory uh, measurement we were looking at. It's reporting a 3212.06 picoseconds uh, for a minimum TDSH measurement. Uh, and that indeed coincides with the actual 3.21206. So those two measurements uh, do indeed uh, line up. So we can see that we're meeting our measurement uh, event values. Uh, matching exactly what's being reported in the System SI report file. Just a little bit about what you're seeing here. Basically what is coming in is the clock signal, uh, the strobe signal, all of these signals were selected so that they were enabled. When Timing Designer generated the diagram files, it noted all of the worst case measurements and where they were located, what they were, whether they were set up or hold, and then placed them in the diagram file itself. Also in the diagram files are the appropriate headers to label what the diagram is displaying. Here is write data for bus group My Data Bus. It's rank one. Sim corner was set to typical. This is receiver memory two. And the project uh, is noted here in the simulation case. Down at the bottom uh, is just the raw location on your system of where the actual curve files were read from. We take a look at the parameter spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet associated with all of the event listings in the diagram. Uh, we can see that everything was located within a nice selected group. Uh, you can expand those groups to see the various values uh, that were placed in the, in the diagram. So you have derating variables. These are from your derating curves. All of the adjusted values from the derating curves were put in a variable uh, and uh, located in the parameter spreadsheet group here. Raw measures, these were all of the actual raw measurements taken uh, without derating values in, uh, into account. And so those are listed here under raw measures. Uh, and then the actual constraints take the adjusted values that were located in the variables uh, and then place them along with setup and hold requirements for that. Uh, and they're labeled appropriately. So TDH is a, a data hold, TDS is a data setup. Uh, and you can see the formula as they were set up here to include the actual requirement for the device as well as the adjusted value from the simulation report. If we look at the project manager, the project manager is an accumulation of all of the files uh, in this particular system project. So here, Time Designer will look for all of the timing diagrams that are present in this particular system SI project and will organize them as such in the history folder as well as the results folder. So there's the history folder, here's the results folder, this is what we just ran. Uh, you'll see the memory 
information located here uh, and any of the accumulated uh, history diagrams are run in here as well. So as you can see the project manager for this project contains several diagrams that had previously been run. With this specific project I took the liberty of renaming the project folders to be more reflective of the system SI simulation results they contain. If I browse my simulation history within system SI I get the same organization for the results as you see in Time Designer. This makes it convenient if you'd like to look at previous simulation runs for a project in Time Designer, you can quickly find the specific run of interest. Translating previous simulation data into Time Designer is exactly the same as described with the current simulation. Simply open the results browser, display the diagrams of interest, then with the right mouse button, select the Generate Report option and proceed as previously described to generate all timing diagrams for the selected simulation runs. All diagrams previously generated will be included in the resulting project manager window.